One thing that I like maybe even more than smart home is 3D printing. So today we are going to look on how to integrate smart home and 3D printing or how to get information from your 3D printer in your smart home. We'll start in a couple of seconds. There are various types of 3D printers. Here I'm talking about the FDM printers or the printers that are printing with some kind of filament. It can be PLA, PETG, ABS or whatever you want to print with. Prerequisite for this video is that you have a 3D printer and that that printer is also running Clipper. There are various types of firmwares, open source, closed source, ripoffs, but we are not going to talk about that. Today we are going to talk about Clipper and how to get your printer inside Home Assistant. And by the way, even if you are running something as old as Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, you can still get Clipper running on it. And believe me, just doing that small upgrade and going from Merlin to Clipper firmware, you will get more out of your printer. My home or my apartment has five FDM printers or printers that print with the filament in the spool. Out of five printers, four of them are running Clipper. Today we are going to look at how you can add printers, such as for example Voron that is running pure Clipper, but also GDQ1 Pro that is running a bit customized version of the firmware inside your home assistant. For that we will be needing a hex component. Yes, there is also possibility of running REST commands, JSONs, etc. to get everything from Clipper or printer running Clipper inside home assistant. And this is something that I have been doing for two plus years now, but this way is even better. For start, let's look at the hex component. By the way, if you do end up using this hex integration, don't forget to say thanks to Marco by clicking on the star and saying that way thank you for his work. I was talking all the time about the Clipper and here we have Moonraker. Yeah, Clipper is a bit funny. You have Clipper, on top of that you have Moonraker and on top of that you have either Fluid or main cell. But these are just components. Clipper is the firmware part. Moonraker, let's call it like that, is an engine on top of it, providing API, etc. And then you have user interface, such as, for example, fluid or main cell. This is, of course, the simplified version of how things are working. But as I said, we will be using Moonraker Home Assistant hacks component to pull data from the Moonraker API and get it inside Home Assistant. Since this hex integration is part of the official hex integrations, we do not have to add any custom repositories. Instead, you can either click here or go to your integrations page, click on plus export and download and type in moon for Moonraker. Click on it and of course click on download link to download and install it. At the time of the recording, the latest version is version 1.2.2. Click download and since this is a hex integration and not a front-end component, we cannot simply reload our UI, we will need to restart our Home Assistant. And now that our Home Assistant has been restarted, let's go to integrations page. On the integrations page, click on add integration, type in moon for Moonraker, we see the hex or custom integration icon here, click on it and the configuration wizard will start. Type in the IP address of the printer. You can leave default port 7125 unless you of course change it. You can use TLS if you have configured TLS on the printer side. API key, which is optional, and you can also specify the printer's name, which if not specified will be pulled from the printer itself. I will be specifying here Voron V2.4R2 and submit. Select area for the printer, finish, and now we have added our first printer. If we look on the integrations page, we can see that we have one device with 165 entities. Number of entities will of course depend on the configuration of your printer. Since this integration also pulls macros or G-codes macros, depending on your configuration and if you have custom macros, there will be a lot of them. Let's click on device and let's check what we have. For the controls, we have cancel print, emergency print, firmware restart, host restart, host shutdown, machine update refresh, plus all the macros that are specified. We can pause the print, resume the print or restart the server. Plus we have 77 entities that are not shown, not enabled. If you need them, of course, you can enable them. And these are all the macros in my case that I have on my printer 
that are currently not enabled. Besides that, we have all the sensors that we need. Bed power information, target temperature, current temperature, chamber temperature, controller fan, cooling down the MCU and Raspberry Pi in my case, display message and all the other options such as MCU information, Nevermore, Nighthawk, tool head position, etc, etc. Plus 10 other entities that are again hidden or not enabled, such as is the update available, machine update, version of the fluid, fluid configuration, happy hard because yes, I also have ERCF, etc, etc. There are a couple of things that are missing here, but don't worry, they will appear when the time comes. And for that, I will also now add the second printer, so you can see what I'm talking here about. Click on add entry if you have another printer. Once again, type in the IP address. All the other fields are not necessary, but I will type in the printer name, GDQ1 Pro, which actually, as I said, is a running clipper, but it is custom version of the clipper, yet still we can add this printer to the home assistant. Click on submit and this time we have 229 entities. The difference between the two printers is not just the manufacturer, the version of the clipper, etc. But this printer is actually printing something currently and this one is sitting idle. If we look at this device here, besides all the other information we have already seen with the previous printer, you will see here live data from the printer, current bed temperature, target bed temperature, fan, chamber temperature, chamber heater, what is the file name that is currently being printed, current layer of the print, status, is the filament in or not, how much filament has been used, but we also have two additional entities that were not available previously, and that is the G-code preview or thumbnail of the item that I'm currently printing, and yes, you can click on it and get the image of that G-code preview, plus we also have a webcam, which is generic camera that will allow you to see direct image from your printer. Depending on what data you want to see in your UI, it's now up to you to customize everything and add that data to your home assistant UI. And for example, you may end up with a screen something like this. Of course, here still we have too much information on the screen, but I do love statistics and information, so this is something that I have in my setup. We have two different printers, GD1 Q1 Pro and the Voron V2.4 R2. All the information about the current state of the printer for both printers. Then we have controls for the GD1 Q Pro and for the Voron V2.4 R2. We have lifetime stats for one and the other printer. And then we have preview for the G-code camera preview, and since currently the printer has no G-code loaded, Voron 1, this one is empty, plus also I have disconnected my camera inside the printer, so the stream from the camera is also off. The question is what you could do with all the data that you have here. For example, if you are printing with materials that require certain temperature, and you need to preheat or soak the printer, heat soak the printer before printing, you can create automation just for that. For example, for warm printers, I don't start printing until the internal chamber temperature inside the printer is above 38 degrees. That means that I can use the chamber temperature sensor and use this information inside Home Assistant. So, for example, I get notified when the temperature goes above 38 degrees. That way I can start printing as soon as the temperature reaches that threshold. The second automation, for example, could be the one to notify you that there is no more filament. For the GD1, I can use this filament sensor, filament is detected, and when it changes state to not detected, I get notification and alert that I should replace the filament. The limitation of this integration is, of course, that you cannot control startup of the printing. For example, you cannot select file, you cannot preheat the printer, you cannot heat the bed, you cannot change the temperature of the bed, of the hot tent, of the chamber. Those currently are not available inside Home Assistant. And in my opinion, this is an awesome thing, because I, for one, am the person that will always tell you, don't expose your printer to the internet, and don't expose your printer to the internet. You never know what way somebody do, either by accident or by intention. And yes, all of the printers are, of course, potential fire hazard in one way or the other. But now we do have very easy and nice way on how to add printer that is running clipper, 
Moonraker. On top of that, inside Home Assistant without running manual commands inside Home Assistant. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any kind of a comment, question, if you are using this integration or if you were using previously scripts to pull data from the Clipper, I really would like to hear your opinion. What do you like? What you don't like? What are you missing? And what you would never use inside Home Assistant related to the 3D printers? And before I wrap up the video, I really would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked and commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.